Hello, I'm Terry Likes and welcome to Communication Connection. This is a program about the accomplishments of the faculty, students, and alumni in the Department of Communication. I know like a lot of you, you're probably used to seeing Dr. John Ford sitting in this chair. <laughs> And there's a reason that we'll tell you why he's not here today. He is actually joining us. He's sitting opposite me today. Right. Dr. Ford, welcome Thank to you. being a guest on this particular program. Right. And you, after 15 years serving as department head of the Department of Communication and more than 30 years of distinguished service to the university, are now easing into a new role. <laughs> so tell us about that new role for That's you. That's right. Well, for anybody who doesn't know, July 1st, I stepped down as department head. And I was happy to welcome you August 1st as our new department head. As you say, I've been a faculty member for actually 32 years. My wife Connie and I came here in the fall of 1987. Uh, we both were offered tenure track teaching positions, so we thought that was a sign we needed to be here. I was public relations director at William Carey in Hattiesburg, and Connie was a business instructor at Jones Junior College. And Connie came here and taught in the Department of Instructional Systems and Workforce Development retired a couple of years ago after 30 years of service as a professor, uh, also advised the Student Honor Society in her last six years, she was department head. So when I arrived here in my appointment, I was named the coordinator of the public relations concentration, as well as the internship program. And I enjoyed doing that for 17 years. And when I became department head, I also kept teaching and advising students, conducting research and then doing service you know, for different organizations, professional and civic. And as you say, I'm very eager to make this transition to professor. It'll give me the opportunity to teach students in more than one public relations class throughout the curriculum and also focus on my research agenda. Well, since you've been in with the university for such a long time uh, and having been involved with teaching and so many student organizations and now watching the students as they become mm -hmm. proud alumni over the years. I know you have many accomplishments that you are anxious to talk about. Well, and I look at these as team accomplishments and I will start with students a little bit. I'm very pleased with the increase in numbers of majors. Uh, 15 years ago we had 464, now we have 574 and that's been a constant number in the last few years. Uh, each year, we have 150 of our majors or more graduate. I think that's a good number. So in addition to these success stories for our on-campus students and programs, we've also become a leader in distance education. In 2006, we offered four classes, had 76 enrolled. This fall, we have nine classes and 275 enrolled. So a lot of increase there. One of the other accomplishments, back in 2000, we restarted or reinitiated our Public Relations Student Society of America chapter. I was the advisor, and then I also worked to connect our students with the Public Relations Association of Mississippi and the Southern Public Relations Federation. And now Dr. Tyler Page and Dr. Terry Hernandez are leading that effort, and they're doing a great job already. So many of our students have been very involved with these professional organizations while they've been on campus. And what we found is when they transition into the profession, then they become the officers and leaders in these groups. And our students have also won so many awards over the years, uh, including broadcasting, journalism, theater. Every year they garner multiple awards at their respective regional organizations. Our public relations students, uh, the, the, the state organization has had a student of the year for nine years. One of our majors has had that honor for five of the nine years, including the last two. So those are some student accomplishments. As you know, we also have an internship program we started with the department about 10 years ago for a major to help us with special events, social media, general promotion of the department. And now we have two students doing that, and that's worked out well. A couple of facilities uh, comments I wanted to make, accomplishments. We do have the theater, the McComas Theater has been renovated and then all of the classrooms have enhanced technology. And I mentioned faculty, you mentioned faculty a minute ago. Our faculty, one of the main goals we've had over recent years is to bring quality people in and have them be successful when they get here and choose to stay. And overall that's happening. Uh, so many of our faculty have won awards over the years teaching and advising and research and service, and a couple of prime examples. Francis McDavid received the Atlee Jeffcoat Advising Award, then Karen Brown was named a master teacher, John Grisham Master Teacher. 
So those are major accomplishments. Another area I've been very excited about personally is the increase in the number of faculty in public relations. I, for several years, I was the only full-time public relations faculty member, which was challenging, and I teased students about they had me for every class, but now we have four tenure-track faculty in public relations and a number of instructors, so it's worked out really well. And I know you're working on this, and it's on the horizon. We need faculty, more faculty, in all of our areas. Well, you mentioned some of the faculty uh, by name, and it, it's interesting when you've been around a university as long as we have in academic life that uh, some of the young faculty were actually former students of ours many oh, yeah. years ago. So yeah. you've had a real impact on the career of students, faculty, and alumni especially. Oh, well, thank you, and I, and I am one, as I tell them often <laughs> since I went to school here, but our alumni have so many impressive titles now, and you and I have talked about this as you arrived. We have vice presidents and directors of public relations and association executive directors and TV news directors and TV sports directors and consultants and radio announcers and theater professors. One example is Jason Cook, and he is APR accredited in public relations. Jason's vice president of marketing and communications at Baylor. He's also the chief marketing officer. Another example, William Folks graduated here a couple of years ago in broadcasting and public relations, started at WCBI in Columbus, stayed there a year or so, did really well, then went to Orlando, the 19th largest TV market in the country, and is now a promotion producer with WFTV. So our alumni, that's just a couple of examples, but our alumni are very loyal. As we've discussed, again, they send us information usually multiple times a week about internships and jobs, and so then we forward that to either current students and or alumni, you know, whichever is appropriate. And so we really enjoy working with our alumni. Another outgrowth of the relationships we have with alumni is the advisory board that we created in 2006. And this is mostly alumni, but it's also other people now who didn't graduate from our department or even the university. So that's worked out really well. Well, part of the, the mission of what we do involves teaching, research, and service. And that service component involves sometimes getting involved with the community. Mm -hmm. And you've been able to do that in a unique way for over a dozen years now, and that involves a golf tournament, but for a right. special reason involving our students and former students. It's our 13th annual Department of Communication Scholarship Golf Tournament coming up September 20th at the MSU course. We usually clear about $5,000, and once again, we're dedicating that money to the Lord to four scholarships that support summer internships. And I always tell people, like, yeah, how much money do you raise? I say, well, that's one part of it, but we also have the opportunity to promote the department through numerous ways, and we also reconnect with alumni and community members. And so it's a really good event, and we have a photo from a few years ago, our WCBI team. Uh, Derek Rogers is wearing a white shirt. He's a, one of our very loyal alumni and advisory board members. And the event this year is the day before the Kentucky MSU football game. And we have the website ready. People can sign up to sponsor, play, all the above if they would like. So that's worked out really well as one of our events. In addition to the DeFore scholarships, we have 10 other funds. And so we, we award over $30,000 every year to some of our best and brightest helps us recruit and retain because we provide funds for students coming in as well as returning students. So we appreciate the support of our alumni and others on these donations. Well, another way alumni have gotten involved is through a fairly new venture that you and the department have become involved with, and that's telling stories, especially involving right. Mississippi and culture and history, and that's the New Narrative Festival, now the New Narrative Conference. Right. Steve Soltis, one of our advisory board members, fell in love with the state. His son went to school here, Chris. And so Steve had this idea, and so we've done it two years, and it basically promotes Mississippi and the different ways we communicate. We've had music from Norbert Putnam, Hannah Lena, Steve Azar, local restaurants donated food, fantastic speakers, just a couple of examples. We had David Abney, who's the CEO of UPS, and a Mississippi native. He talked about the importance of storytelling on an international front. And then we also had Dr. Mark Keenum, our own, and Robert St. John, who's an author and chef from Hattiesburg, talk about global food security from a variety of angles. And we've had faculty involved, and I know you're working to increase that, which I think is great. We had a faculty panel last year about media trends. We've also had the chance to get our advisory board, alumni, and current students involved. So this is a great event. We're hoping it'll grow. 
Uh, plans are underway for next spring, the third annual, so stay tuned. Other ways that you have had an impact on the Department of Communication involves growing certain areas. So, for example, uh, PRISM, which is the acronym for Public Relations Integrated Student Media, and mm -hmm. a young faculty member taking that over, and then right. the growth of the speech and debate team over the last few years. I know right. accomplishments for the department to grow in a variety of ways. Well, you mentioned the speech and debate team, and Brett Harvey, who's director of Title IX on campus, and then Cheryl Chambers, one of our faculty, started that four years ago. Last year, Terry, there were 10 events that they competed in and they placed first in five of those as a team. They won 85 individual awards, so I think they're being very competitive. You mentioned PRISM, Dr. Terry Hernandez started that. We wanted to do a student-run public relations firm for many years. Last year, we had 11 students working with four clients. This coming year, it's 27 students working with six clients, so we're thrilled with that. We appreciate the support of the dean, provost, and others in making that happen. The other big event, which is almost done, or big uh, issue, is the uh, Mac South Digital Media Center in the library. This was a conversation, resulted from a conversation with Stephen Canetto, an advisory board member and associate dean of libraries. This will be a TV studio and a control room and a one-button studio and a classroom, and obviously it'll be great for our broadcast students, but in addition, people all over campus, faculty and students, will be able to use it. So we're really excited about this. Appreciate that partnership that we've been able to help them make this a reality. Well, it's quite obvious you've done so much for the department and for the university on behalf of our students and faculty and alumni. So what's next for John Ford? Well, as you know, I'm on sabbatical this fall, and so I'll be focusing on research and still on the Universal Accreditation Board, which is a group that manages the accreditation and public relations program. We're doing a practice analysis as part of that, the research group I'm on and it's looking at what happens in the field, what people do on a day-to-day -day basis, what they think is important. I'm also a member of the Commission on Public Relations Education, and we try to bridge the gap and make recommendations between the practice and education. I'm very interested, and we'll do research on student perceptions of gender in public relations, as well as best practices in teaching public relations. Also very honored to be working with InSpark this year, again, as a faculty fellow, and I've been asked to MC uh, the upcoming data summit, so that's good. Working with Pram, SPRF still to connect students with careers. And then uh, still very involved with my church in Rotary. And I'm excited to have a little more time to spend with our family, including Connie, our son John David, and his wife Sophia, our granddaughters Isabella and Emma live on the coast, grandson on the way. Son Daniel lives in Jackson, his wife Laura, and so we'll get to spend a lot more time with them. John, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate all of your accomplishments and service to the university and the Department of Communication. I'm Terry Likes. Thank you for watching Communication Connection.